Oh, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, and thank you for including Champion the Challenges today. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you about it, and it's a great time to talk about stroke awareness and really heart health, just given that it's February and the focus has been about paying attention to your body, listen to signs, and we talk a lot about heart attacks. Deb and Bob. Oh, there you are. Hey there. Hello. Hi. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And thank you for including Champion the Challenges today. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you about it. And it's a great time to talk about stroke awareness and really heart health, just given that it's February and the focus has been about pay attention to your body, listen to the warning signs. And we talk a lot about heart attacks and heart disease, but a lot of times we don't talk about strokes. And I'm willing to bet that most people that are tuning in to this conversation that we're gonna have, know somebody in their life that has suffered a stroke or know somebody who knows somebody that has suffered a stroke. It's, it's incredibly prevalent, unfortunately. And uh, I'm so grateful that Deb and Bob Shaw are here to, uh, to share their story, Deb, you in particular, and what has inspired you to come up with this wonderful program that's helping other victims of stroke. So Deb, I, I guess I want to start with you. Uh, tell me about what happened. In, you are a three-time stroke survivor. So tell me about that first experience and what happened. Well, Bob was out of the country and mm -hmm. I was at home with my 90 year old father-in-law and we did not know enough about it we i was it was in the middle of the night i was sleeping mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and i reached a point where i really could not get out of bed um and quite a few hours had passed and i was uh suffering a, an ischemic stroke that was at the brain stem it was called a pons ischemic wow. stroke and just too many hours had gone by and uh, getting me to the hospital it was too late to give me a tpa iv um, by the time bob got back in town that evening he was flying overseas um, i was in the hospital and they determined that um, it was a stroke that affected my whole right side uh, so I, I was wheelchair bound, I couldn't walk, um, and uh, I, using, you know, my left hand was, uh, was it was pretty useless, um, but uh, that was five and a half years ago. Um, so wow. I, I'm thankful to be uh, recovering from that first attack. Wow, and, and you had two other episodes after that, right? I did. I had the second stroke uh, actually three months later, right in front of my doctor at a follow up. All of a sudden, he looks at Bob and he looks at me and he's, he's asking me questions. And he looks at Bob and he goes, This isn't right. She's not quite answering me correctly. And I was suffering a second attack right in front of both of them. And he said, Bob, get Deb to the ER. Fortunately, it was just two minutes away, and mm -hmm. uh, Bob got me there right away. Wow. And what did the doctors say? What, what were your risk factors? Was there anything related to health? Well, I mean, in, in terms of taking care of yourself, or was this something that they believed was somehow genetic or just, unfortunately, how your body was made? Uh, well, it was very unfortunate that, um, you know, after the second stroke occurred, they ran a whole gambit of tests on me for a solid week while I was in the hospital. No one in my family has ever had a stroke. Uh, so I, you know, it, it was just one of those things. They claim that a statistic is about 40% of the folks that survive a stroke never know why they even got them. Wow. 
And did you find that, was there something that you could have done beforehand in terms of a, a test you could have taken that would analyze your risk factor? Or is this something that unfortunately sometimes just happens? It unfortunately does sometimes just happen. Yeah, it, it's interesting because they'll say that diabetes, AFib mm -hmm. and high blood pressure, and then obviously diet are kind of four primary reasons. Um, right. And, and AFib, you know, speaking of the heart, is one of those very unfortunate things. In many cases, a lot of people will have AFib and not know it. Um, mm -hmm. So doctors are now getting more uh, curious as they're doing the physicals, and they may do some deeper tests, especially if you know, AFib runs in the family. Wow. So tell me a little bit about your recovery. I know it's been very challenging, but you've really pushed through it and come across, come, come out the other side improved. <laughs> Tell us about it. Certainly have, Elizabeth. Thank you. The third stroke um, was happening actually when we came home from a dinner and um, I completely went blank and that's when I lost the eyesight. But it was the mm -hmm. concussion that fortunately burst the stroke that was happening in my retina and then my eyesight started to come back. Um, so after these three strokes, Bob and I really started to put our heads together and, you know, by this time it was about four, four and a half years um, and we just started to assemble um, all of my notes from all the therapies, from physical therapy, occupational therapy, and then what else is out there. And, you know, I started doing healthcare virtual reality. I was doing cranial acupuncture. I was doing aquatic therapy. Um, and so all these things, we really had to be our own advocate and search for more, more. I was right. like on this path of, I have got to overcome all of this um, mm -hmm. because we, we just love to do so many things. And this kind of, you know, had me wheelchair bound. And then I started setting goals and going, okay, what does it take to get into, you know, a walker and then to, you know, a four point cane, a single point cane. And it was all the therapy classes, hyperbaric oxygen therapy was critical as well. Wow. So we really did go on this path of everything possible. How can we make this a better life for me after these three strokes? And these, these therapies, they sound fascinating, but very much off the beaten path. I mean, when I, I've done lots of stories about stroke and heart, and heart disease and heart attacks, and, you know, most of the talk is about different medications, some therapy, but certainly nothing to the realm of virtual reality. And I know a lot of folks are, are tuning in thinking, I don't know if something like that happened to me. I don't even know where I would go and what I would do, or even if I could afford to have access to all that, which is why you developed this incredible program that is there for other stroke survivors to access, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and part of it is we, we realized, Elizabeth, as we would go, Deb would talk about, oh, I did cardio acupuncture, and people would go, I didn't even know that was available for stroke. Um, yeah. And a number of these therapies now um, are covered by insurance in varying degrees. And so the good news is if you're aware of them and you can bring them up to your doctor and they have to mm -hmm. obviously give you the okay. Um, but the other thing we found in research was there's an old thinking that six months after you've had a stroke and many mm -hmm. you'll hear in chatter that, you know what, wherever you're at in your rehab, where you're at at six or seven months is probably all the better you're gonna get. And that's not at all the case because the brain plasticity as they've determined will continue to rebuild itself. Um, the brain in some ways is very smart, but it's lazy. So you have to push it really hard. And we found with Deb that using a combination of all these therapies um, really exercise her brain in different ways. And we think helped really cause her to improve beyond what some would have thought was possible. It didn't no allow me to Remarkable. be lazy. Yeah, and no. the endurance yeah. building was so critical as well. And is this something that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life? Or was this something that you needed to do for this very concentrated period of time to get yourself back to where you wanted to be? 
Well, it does come in spurts. Um, so getting back into society was first and foremost in getting back to the community, being able to go out and be able to shop. And, you know, eventually I'm hoping to be able to drive again. Mm -hmm. And so it does go through these spurts because I will want to do every bit of all of these therapies again, but I also want to live my life. And I want right. to be able to travel with Bob and do things. And we have two Fox Terriers that we love to take out, <laughs> and, you know, walk around town and do things with. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I have my exciting little you know, hobbies. I love hummingbirds. Right. And so I have them all <laughs> over the house outside. And I love to bird watch. So in order to do things like that, you have to sacrifice some therapies so that you can get back to the finer things that you love in life mm -hmm. and why you're and working these, so hard. No question. And do you add the doctors? said that these therapies are going to hopefully prevent another stroke from happening as well well yes. they yes. haven't they haven't necessarily said that because i think they have to be they're, they're cautious of <laughs> you know making any sure. forward looking statements but they were very encouraging in you know the other kind of unsung hero in many cases on this whole journey were the therapists themselves mm -hmm. um they're um, they're gifts from gifts from God to us. They're like a combination of a teacher and a coach together, because mm -hmm. they've got to listen and figure out where you're at on your journey. But then, mm -hmm. you know, they push Deb, and they really. I mean, the first time we went to dinner, and she wore shoes that she didn't have to have her brace on. She's mm -hmm. getting out of the car, and I'm taking a video of her walking across the parking lot. <laughs> And we're sending it to the therapist to say, hey, we did it. She did it. Yeah. Um, and they love that they love feedback that. Yeah. because yes. I work with them on my goal setting. Like one of the things early on through the stroke, we were invited to a wedding. And I was really nervous and I was frail. And Bob helped me put on false eyelashes. But ah. then I also did it. I also she couldn't get her one hand up, and I go, okay, you got to show me how to do this. I've been thing. very impressed, Bob. I'll, that, I'll, that's, I'll, I'll that's, figure it out. That's multi-talented. Yeah. And it's so, on video somewhere, but we keep it. <laughs> and so I told my therapist, okay, this is going to be at a ranch, so I have to be able to walk on gravel. I have to walk on thicker, higher grasses and uphill. So that was, you know, goals that were I had to you know I had to have my therapist help me accomplish um, and the beauty of it is is out of the gym at the hospital and they're in the parking lot they're walking across the grass they went down to the park and met her there and so the beauty of it is they said hey tell us where you want to be in life and let's build the therapy around that as opposed to just you know generic therapy so it was sure. awesome that's fantastic. Well, I want to talk to you about this organization, Champion the Challenges, that you founded based on your experience through going through all these different therapies and helping other stroke survivors not only mentally prepare themselves for what the journey ahead, but also have access and just the knowledge of the therapies and options that are out there. So tell us a little bit about this organization. Absolutely. Well, I could not find a website like ours anywhere. So mm -hmm. Bob and I put our heads together. We started making these small little booklets that all are therapy inspired mm -hmm. and put them together in a short, small little booklet format that opens free on the website as flip books. And then we also provide them in print to anyone who requests them for free. But it's one site that provides inspiration and hope that this is a stroke survivor that has made it three times. And mm -hmm. I'm sharing my experiences and what worked for me. Mm -hmm. Look into it yourself, ask your doctor, is it right for you? But also the technology, everything that mm -hmm. is out there that I have tried and I have enjoyed and I saw improvement in my endurance and my ability to get back into, you know, real world activities was so critical. And mm. how better than to know that I'm a survivor and I'm sharing all this with someone. 
And, mm -hmm. you know, we're writing stories that stroke survivors want to share. And they're mm. like, but how do we get this out there? We'll write the story for you. You just tell us what happened. And, mm -hmm. you know, someone is always going to learn from someone else and be inspired sure. by someone else. And, and it's cathartic to hear somebody else went through it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. And I, and I can imagine that. I, I can imagine it's become very popular given that there are so many stroke survivors out there that are frankly sort of daunted by this prospect of recovery. Yes. The, the other thing that we found is the, the family is a part of this journey. And in many cases, um, if they're across the country, they're kind of like, hey, how do I help my brother or mom and dad or you know, one of my siblings? What is it I can do? And so mm -hmm. a lot of the information we put on there gives them kind of their role and how they can contribute and how they can be involved in helping the survivor uh, along mm -hmm. with the caregivers. So it creates kind of this whole ecosystem because everybody plays a role uh, in helping them improve. And, and frankly, the other thing, a lot of people have said, you know what, I've now become more knowledgeable. It's something that we talk about at work or I had a friend that was experiencing this and we called 911 and got him the, it just brings the awareness. People are more plugged into the early warning signs uh, to take action. We give them no all kinds of tips on the website, like thinking about writing down all the medicines and how much of it you take to all your doctor's names. Mm -hmm. um, we make it fun around the dining room table with tongue twisters to get the family involved in getting, mm -hmm. you know, engagement with the survivor. So many times we run into people that are all by themselves and they're right. like, I just don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, yeah. I may not have a Bob and, mm -hmm. you know, how can I persevere? And so that's mm -hmm. where these booklets and inspiration and hope and love really comes through i think on champion the challenges because there's something there for everyone to engage yeah. with a stroke survivor yeah I, I i forgot to mention that you both are from los gatas and here in the bay area and i know there's a lot of great medical resources out here but it seems like there needs to be more information out there for stroke survivors and that's what you're providing. Is there any other service that you'd like to see the hospitals be do or treatment centers do for folks that maybe don't have the access to the type of treatment that you got? Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because we talk about this all the time. One of the yeah. areas that I think needs to be explored, and there's a statistic that many people that are scheduled for rehab, if they're scheduled for 25 rehabs, they may only go to 10 or 11 of them and the mm -hmm. reasons they don't continue to go is transportation mm. is very difficult um yes. and many it, it has to be scheduled in advance they've got a very tight window of when they can sure. be picked up and so anything that can be done in helping bring awareness to this and offer programs that will be very service oriented for those that need to get to and from therapy and in a lot of cases elizabeth mm -hmm. you may have you know, folks that are not only in a wheelchair, but we have, there are patients at Good Samaritan that are friends with us, that they have uh, their canine companion that has to come with them. So there's a, lot of, sure. there, there's a lot of different things that have to be managed, but helping them get to and from therapy would be a real blessing for a lot of these folks. Absolutely, and I'm sure you getting the word out will inspire some hopefully an organization to come forward and, and, and be a resource that I'm sure that you will connect many of your, uh, your visitors to as well. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us and thank you for sharing your story, Deb. I know that you have been on an incredible journey and it, it I mean, it's so inspiring to see you, to see that oh. the hard work and the dedication and the perseverance really paid off. And we're just so happy to see you healthy and, and to see your, your loving spouse by your side there, Bob, who can put on <laughs> fake eyelashes. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just very inspiring, a true love story on, on near Valentine's day. And also a great message about, um, stroke and stroke survival and um, great resources for people who, who need them out there that may not know that those types of resources are out there. So thank you so much. You thank are you so very much. welcome. Thank you. And All have right. a wonderful Valentine's Day.
Thank you. And you too. Best of health and luck to both of you. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.